Hi friends, Cole here with episode 48 of Questions for Cole. It is April 21st, 2021. I had one question come in this week. It's a good one with a nice short answer. The question is, Cole, did you get vaccinated yet? And the answer is, drum roll please. Wow, thanks. The answer is yes. I have had my first shot, so I am now permitted to travel halfway down my driveway and anywhere I want to in my own backyard. But still, the first shot is definitely a step in the right direction and a sign of progress. I encourage you all to get signed up and on the list. I know many of you have already received the vaccine, at least the first dose, and I know that some of our good people are actually helping out by working or volunteering at some of the sites. Thanks to all of you who are doing your part. Now, since no other questions came in this week, that gives me a chance to ask my own question. So here goes. Let me just type it in here. Dear Cole, first of all, thanks for doing such a great job answering all of these questions that people keep sending in to you. Keep up the good work. Here's my question. With tomorrow being Earth Day, have you read anything this week about Earth Day that you would like to share with everyone? Great question, Cole. Thanks so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule. Well, actually, I have found something about Earth Day that I'd like to share with you. You must have been reading my mind. I found a site called For the Love of Creation that our United Church of Canada is actually a partner organization of. And on one of the pages on their website, they have a list of 27 actions that we can take to help make a better world. 19 of those actions are related specifically to the environment and climate change. And then another eight are about seeking right relations with one another, specifically our indigenous sisters and brothers. It's a great list. 27 seems like a lot to read, but they are mostly worded very briefly, so it won't take me long to share the whole thing. I'll just read it as it appears on their website. Here it goes. Again, this is from the website www.fortheloveofcreation.ca. I encourage you to check out their whole site. This is their personal action pledge. It says, while actions by government, industry, and other large emitters will have the most impacts in reducing greenhouse gas emissions, personal and household actions are also very important. These actions signal to leaders and the market that we are ready to adopt and advocate for a low carbon lifestyle and will favor political leaders and products in the economy that align with our priorities. Personal and household actions vary in terms of their impact on greenhouse gas emissions. We provide a list of ideas below, starting with those that have the highest impact. One, live car free, walk, bike, or use public transit. Two, avoid or eliminate air travel. Three, divest from fossil fuels. Four, buy green energy, in brackets, install solar panels or purchase green energy. Five, drive a more efficient car, for example, electric or hybrid. Six, eat a plant-based diet. Seven, reduce energy use. Eight, reduce consumption, in brackets, buy less, buy used, buy local. Number nine, wash clothes in cold water and hang to dry. Number 10, improve home energy efficiency. In brackets, upgrade windows, doors, and insulation, buy Energy Star appliances, switch to LED light bulbs, etc. Number 11, recycle. Number 12, eat local and in season. 13, conserve water. 14, compost. 15, plant a tree. 16, purchase carbon offsets. 17. Reduce single-use plastics in your life. 18. Plant a food or pollinator garden. 
19. Support eco-friendly businesses. Great list. Those are 19 about the environment. Uh, now, to build relationships and practice reconciliation. This is the second part of the list. This is a critical decade for climate action, and while we need to take swift and bold actions now to maintain global temperatures to 1.5 cent, uh, degrees Celsius, we must do so in a way that addresses inequalities, reinforces human rights, and builds resilience in communities. We can all play a part in achieving climate justice by working for reconciliation, rebuilding our own relationship with the earth, standing in solidarity with marginalized communities, amplifying the voices of youth, and much more. We encourage you to explore some of the options below for promoting climate justice and decolonization and honoring indigenous rights. While taking any one of these actions will be a positive step, we encourage you to consider multiple actions. Reconciliation is a lifelong journey of learning and unlearning, which cannot be achieved by a singular action. So here's the list of eight. One, learn more about the treaty or nation-to-nation -nation history of your region from both the indigenous and settler experiences. Two, learn the territorial acknowledgement for the land on which you reside and consider moments in your work, worship, or everyday life where you can acknowledge the territory with others. Three, read the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. Four, study and learn more about the 94 calls to action of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. 5. Support Indigenous land defenders and water protectors. 6. Support Indigenous-owned businesses and initiatives. 7. Learn about your local watershed and the issues related to its protection. And 8. Learn about the Indigenous names for the places and bodies of water where you live. And that's it. A lot of food for thought in both sections of that list and some great challenges for all of us to consider and to take up in how we live our own lives and interact with those around us as well as with the land, sea and sky that our Creator God has given us as blessing, gift and responsibility. That's it for me today. Keep sending in those questions. You can email them to cole at selkirkunitedchurch.ca. I'd love to hear from you. Take care, friends, and I'll see you next time.